This video, we're going to talk about consonant place features. The first three big features we need to talk about for place features are the unary features. Unary features are not plus or minus. A sound either has it or it doesn't. So for instance, a sound can be labial, coronal, or dorsal. It is not going to necessarily be multiple, uh, except in a case of w, which would say labial velar, so maybe labial and dorsal. But if a sound is labial, then we don't say it's minus coronal minus dorsal. We just say it is a labial sound. So you either include this in your feature matrix or you don't. Labial, meaning lips. Coronal, meaning at the tongue blade or tongue tip. And dorsal, meaning the tongue body. So in other words, the middle and back of your tongue. And each of these unary features has a host of features within it that we can talk about. So for instance, under coronals, we have four features we can talk about. The first one is plus or minus anterior. And these features only apply to coronal sounds. It does not make sense to talk about plus or minus anterior on a labial sound. So essentially anterior means, is it in the front? So if it is plus anterior, it's in the front, meaning it's in your alveolar ridge or forward. So some examples of plus anterior sounds, which we call plus ant, would be something like th or t or s. So here we have a dental sound, then we have our alveolar sounds. Minus anterior sounds would be something like the alveopalatal ch or sh, or even the sound further back in the palate. So this would be the palatal stop ch. So that is a minus anterior sound. So anterior distinguishes between alveolar ridge and dental with the alveopalatal and palatal sounds. The next feature we have is plus or minus distributed. And essentially, if it's plus distributed, we pronounce it with the blade of our tongue. So if I have my horribly drawn picture of a tongue here, I'd like to put the tongue up at the top. Uh, so I will put, I'll put a little ridge here. The tongue tip, of course, in red, is the very tip of the tongue, while the tongue blade would be essentially this part right here. So, for instance, if we think about the tongue blade, we can really hear it in sounds like sh or zh or th, where it's not the tip of the tongue making it the sound. It is at the front of the tongue, but it's not the tip. It's just behind the tip. Compare that to minus distributive sound, which is the tip, like t and d and z and s, which we can feel much more with it being the tip of the tongue. So plus distributed meaning the blade, minus distributed meaning the tip. Okay, the third feature is plus or minus strident. And the, the feature strident is kind of hard to get your head around. Essentially, we say it's plus strident if there's air flowing through the tongue blade and it's aimed at the teeth. <laughs> so strident, or we could even call this sibilant. So if you've heard the word sibilance before, things like s, z, sh, z, ch, j. In other words, if we just think of strident as being these six sounds and thinking, oh, these really turbulent s sounds are a group that are plus strident, that's a good way to look at things. Now, the minus strident, which you may hear a difference, things like th, well, the, t the air isn't going through the tongue blade and aimed at the teeth, because it's going through the teeth. In t and d, uh, this is made with the tip, so of course, uh, well, I know s and s are going with the tip as well, but air is flowing through the tongue blade. And, t and d, it's just a release that's being made. And in ol, air is not going at the teeth, it's going around the tongue. So again, these are minus strident sounds. And the fourth feature, which I am only going to briefly touch on because in English it's not too important, is plus or minus lateral. English has one lateral sound, which is ol but it can also be used to describe these three other sounds, which I will not pronounce, but these do not occur in English, and these are the only four lateral sounds in the entire phonetic alphabet. So, when do we use plus lateral? We use it when we're talking about one of these four sounds. So if I want to specifically talk about the sound O in a feature matrix, I could literally just write plus lat, because that's the only sound in English that has a lateral feature. 
So if we're talking about all, we include just that feature because that's all we need to pinpoint that all. Okay, so those are coronal features. If a sound is coronal, if it has the unary feature coronal, then we can list these four features and give it plus or minus values. Now, if we have labial sounds, then we can talk about plus and minus round. And this also applies to vowels because we use our lips to change the shape of our vowels too, but we'll cover that more in the vowel video. So plus or minus round asks a simple question, and that is, are the lips rounded? And if the answer is yes, such as in w, u, o, or u, this is a French vowel, u, then it is round. But minus round, something like p, i, e, a, n, it's not rounded here. So notice, I only talk about labial sounds and vowels. For w, this is what we call a labiovelar sound, so this is both labial and dorsal, but we also only talk about vowels. It does not make any sense to talk about t being minus round because t is not formed with the lips. It is not a labial sound. So we only use this plus or minus round feature for labials and vowels. Okay, labials are very exciting. They have one feature under them. Dorsals are a little bit more complicated. And they have three features that talk about the tongue body position. And these are also very important features for vowels. So vowels are going to be labial and dorsal. But of course, dorsals, we can talk about the height of the tongue. So is it high or low? You might be saying, why do we need high and low? Well, if it's not high and not low, then it means central. So that's why we have both features. But we only have plus or minus back. So that is if the tongue is back or not. So if we take a look at all the different languages in the world and all the phonological processes, we never need to talk about minus front and minus back. So the phonological reasoning is that because we don't need the plus or minus front to capture phonological changes, we don't need the feature. But when I introduce vowels, I am going to use the plus or minus front feature just so we can classify the sounds a little bit better to start out with. So for introductory phonology, we'll, we will use plus or minus front when talking about vowels, but as you move further, you're going to drop that feature because it's not necessary in any analysis. Okay, so let's just talk about tongue body positions. And I think it's better just to take a look at a chart of these different features. So velars, uvulars, and pharyngeals. And what's the difference? So velars. Velars are high, like k and g and n. These are high in the tongue, or high in the mouth. Your tongue is pretty high. It's not low, but it's also not back. So, I mean, it feels like it's at the back of your mouth for English sounds, but relative to uvulars and pharyngeals, it is not in the back. So, let's take a look at uvulars, for instance. So, we have k as a velar. If we move back further, we get uvular, like k. In this case, our tongue is no longer high. We've lowered it a little bit, but we haven't made it super low. It's just essentially central, but it's more back. So, k. It feels like it's in the back of your throat. So that's where this plus back is. Now, pharyngeals. Pharyngeals are very hard to pronounce for me, so I may not do it very good. But again, pharyngeals are even lower. It's no longer high. In fact, it's even lower than uvulars. But now it's no longer back. So we're just going down more to the throat. We're not going towards the back of the throat. We're just going into the throat. So pharyngeal like k, which we can feel our tongue getting very low, but it's not at the back of our throats. So these are the features we can use to separate the three sounds. Of course, if we want to take a look at velars, uh, we can get a little bit more into the velars. So for instance, we could talk about the difference between a palatalized K, and then of course the rounded K. Um, for the sake of intro to features, I'm not going to talk about these, but if I do any problems in the future, I will specify the features. And if you look at feature charts online, you can also see how these affect your features as well. So if you want to go more in depth about the differences between the minor changes that you can get in velars, uh, feel free to do that online on your own. Um, for most introductory phonetics courses or phonology courses, these kind of minor details 
uh, you won't need to memorize. You'll always be able to look these up online. Okay, so the final set of features for constants we're going to look at are laryngeal features. And these are pretty straightforward features. So plus or minus voice, I'm assuming you could probably do pretty much every sound off the top of your head. Or maybe if you thought about it, you could determine whether there's plus voice or minus voice on a sound. So is there voicing? Some courses you may just treat this as a unary feature. There's either voice or there's not. Uh, for this of course, I'll keep it as plus or minus voice. The other two that might be a little bit more challenging are plus or minus spread glottis. And essentially it is plus spread, gl spread glottis if the glottis is wide. So huh, it is very open. And when we have aspirated sounds, such as p or k, our glottis also spreads. So plus sg is a great way to get at the aspirated consonants. Constricted glottis is essentially the opposite of spread glottis. Is your glottis narrow and constricted? So the glottal stop, as in uh-oh, you heard kind of the constriction between uh and o, oh, uh-oh. Oh. In fact, in English, some people that speak other languages that have these uh, glottal stops say that English speakers produce a glottal stop at the beginning of every word with a vowel. So something like apple, they may hear a glottal stop at the beginning of it. So plus CG is a good way of getting at those sounds. Uh, also for ejectives, I'm very bad at making ejectives, so I won't, but essentially you eject air. It's a little bit different than aspiration, so it's not the same as p, it's more like p, uh. I, that was absolutely terrible. Uh, definitely check out an IPA voice chart online if you want to hear a good ejective and not that abysmal mess that I just made. Um, but plus CG is a good way of getting at the ejectives. In fact, in English, if we want to talk about just the glottal stop, plus constricted glottis is all we need because it is the only uh, plus CG sound we have in English. So that's it for all the consonant features. I will have a video that works on questions about these features for consonants, so you will be able to get practice in this video series. Then after that, we'll move into vowels. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer them.